How to make a Stuart 5A crosshead oiler. Part 5. Fitting the oil patch to make it work. If you've been following this series, you've seen the part about building the pump, and I left it the last time with these unions fitted into the crosshead. And all I have to do now is just connect some pipes from these unions down to the pump, but it's not quite as simple as it first seems. In order for the oil delivery to be even at both sides of the crosshead guide, these pipes need to be exactly the same size and then fitted to a common pipe which goes down to the pump itself. The piping I'm using, by the way, is 3 seconds of an inch in diameter, which is very small. And that's why I've used my very small pipe bender to bend the pipes, and this pipe bender is from a company in China called Microcosm. After cutting and bending the pipes, I used a needle file to make sure there were no burrs in the end of the pipes. And now for the silver soldering. For a job like this, you need to use very thin silver solder wire. But I don't have any silver solder wire, so I've got no choice really. I just have to be careful not to apply too much silver solder from these large sticks. I think it's worth mentioning that I turned down the gas pressure to the blowtorch because if I use it on full, it would just melt the piping. I've done this before, when I was young and foolish. Before cleaning up the piping, I'm going to fit both of the pieces in place. As you can see from this view, the pipes are far too long. This was intentional. So now I just hold a T-piece up against the pipes and make a mark on them where I need to cut them to fit the T-piece in the middle. And in this clip I'm making a mark on the piping with a small needle file. And I know it's fairly obvious, but this is where I'm going to cut the piping on the bandsaw. I could have run two pipes, one from each union down to the pump, but then one pipe would have been longer than the other, so I really don't want that to happen. I prefer to make it this way, so that when I move the pump handle, an even amount of oil goes down both sides of the crosshead guide. This clip just shows me cleaning up the piping with this 0000, 000 grade wire wool. And this is really good stuff for cleaning up copper piping. Look how shiny it makes it. This clip shows the T-piece fitted, and that will be piped down to the pump. I'd like to apologise to viewers for my error in not getting any silver solder wire and having to use too much silver solder on these joints, but at least they're strong and they're not going to leak. And now it is reassembly time, reassembly being the opposite of disassembly. And that's just for the viewer who pulled me up about using Americanisms in the English language. This next part of the job is very fiddly. I've soldered a coned union onto one end of the pipe and now I've fitted it to the T-piece in the centre. What I'm doing is bending the pipe so it follows the contours of the engine as it goes down to the pump. Now I need to make a special union cone as an adapter at the pump end. I'm machining this up from a piece of brass. First of all, I reduce the diameter of the piece of brass so that it fits in a union nut. And the best way to see if it fits is to just try a union nut on the end of it. And no, that doesn't fit, I'll take a bit more off. I'm doing this 100% manual, I don't have the auto feed engaged, so I just move the tool backwards. And now when I try the union nut in place for a second time, it fits but it's a bit tight, so I'll just take a tiny bit more off I think. It's at this point when many jobs are usually ruined by being a bit ambitious and taking too much off and then suddenly it's too small. But I know from experience that I'm taking just enough off for it to fit in the union nut perfectly. And I'm so confident that it will fit, I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper to just polish up the end. The next part of the job is to drill the hole down the centre, and for this I'm using a centre drill. It's always a good idea to start with a centre drill, so the hole is in the centre. And now I'm drilling the hole 3 seconds of an inch to accept the pipe. This is a very simple part to make. What I did after this was parted it off, turned it round in the chuck, and cut an angle of about 60 degrees on the other end. I would have shown this if only I had pressed record on the camera. But all is not lost, I got this clip with the pipe in the hole. The main thing is though, I made the union cone and it fits in the concave socket in the pump itself. And this clip shows me removing my union cone, ready to silver solder it onto the pipe, not forgetting to fit the nut. The best way to align this pipe with the shape of the engine is to tighten both ends and then very carefully tweak it with your hand until the position of the pipe matches perfectly the contours of the engine. To finish the job, all I need to do is tighten every union just to make sure the oil doesn't leak and run everywhere. In this clip you can see the principle. That's one side, 
and this is the other side. And as you can see, an equal amount of oil flows down both sides. There is more to this oiling system than meets the eye. The oil that runs down the side of the crosshead guide runs along the crosshead itself and as you can see starts to run down the crosshead, down the connecting rod and down to the big end. Lubrication of the big end is of the utmost importance. And as you can see from this clip the oil stays in the hole for quite a while and constantly lubricates the crosshead. This small oil can was given to me by a man called Colin who called in the other day. And it's really useful, I have some full size ones of these but they're a bit too big. Whereas this small oil can is really useful for getting into small places. Here I'm filling the oil cups that lubricate the main bearings. And it's also good for lubricating the eccentric straps because you can get just the right amount of oil in there. And that's about it for this short series about making a crosshead oiler for a 5A steam engine. I'm going to play the video out with lots of shots of the engine running. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.